And good evening from Washington. Uh, we're going to get right to it tonight. A first lady double standard. That's the focus of tonight's angle. She's gracious, she's generous, and she's beautiful inside and out. So if Melania Trump were a liberal, it would be a nonstop love fest from the media. But since she's married to President Trump, it's a very different story. The First Lady's shoes, remember they were wrong during hurricane relief? Remember they mocked her accent in her recitation of the Lord's Prayer before a rally? And now, get this, according to some in the media, she can't even decorate the White House for Christmas properly. Let's recall, by the way, how Michelle Obama was treated when she rolled out her White House decorations. But Next stop, the Red Room, festooned with cranberries and fruit trees. For Christmas alone, we're going to have more than 90,000 people come through these doors. How many hands do you shake at Christmas time? Oh, thousands, thousands, thousands. Show me how you do it without getting a... You know me. This yeah. is usually... <laughs> but I, know I love that, but you can't I do, do that with everyone. I do a lot of hugs. I you almost do? do. There's so many firsts in the White House. I remember the Chicago Sun-Times, the first time you all came to the White House, there's this big front page story with you in the red dress. <laughs> the first time you spend the night at the White House, the first cabinet meeting at the White House. What's your favorite first? Gosh, that's a good question. Christmas, this, this your is first Christmas? beautiful. And I've never visited the White House during Christmas. And it is just absolutely magical. They are managing a star. She can sell magazines simply by being on the cover. She can sell sweaters simply by putting them on. She's a striking Harvard-educated lawyer who can hold her own next to anyone. Okay, I just, that is great. It's great, it's great to go back and remember, right? It was, it was her arms, it, the way she cared, it was everything was great about Michelle, Michelle Obama, cover of Vogue, how many times, 20 times? And so basically you, you'd swear that Michelle Christmas time walked on eggnog. But when Melania Trump unveiled this year's spectacular White House Christmas decorations, Vanity Fair went on the attack. This nasty columnist, I've never heard of her name, Kenzie Bryant, suggested that the First Lady had finally made herself productive. This is what she said. Is it safe to assume that we have some clarity as to what she's been up to when she's not traversing the Great Wall of China or making an appearance at turkey parting ceremony? Maybe. It's funny how, uh, by the way, little concern they had for what Michelle Obama was up to when she was jetting all over the globe and hosting private parties at the White House with all the Hollywood glitterati. I mean, every other weekend it was like celebration time in the White House. I remember she was carting her children all over the place at the Harry Potter movie sets, locking down Broadway every time she and Barack had date night. It was all great, all at the taxpayer expense. I can go on and on and on, but it's nearly Christmas. So back to Melania. The First Lady made one of the most elegant entrances I frankly have ever seen at a White House Christmas decoration preview. So she descended the Truman Staircase as ballet dancers performed in the Great Hall. Looked like it was the Nutcracker performance itself. And even that was ridiculed. Vanity Fair this time actually put words in the First Lady's mouth, writing, quote, adequately done, she probably whispered to the principal dancer. I only counted four mistakes. Isn't that fun? Online, some are comparing nighttime images of the Christmas decorations to a total nightmare. Well, these, all the memes, you know, the White Witch of Narnia, it's all up there. But you know what a real nightmare is? It's the double standard that has become so obvious, so routine, and apparently so acceptable where conservative women are concerned. The only acceptable, real, authentic woman in the media landscape today is a liberal woman, a progressive one. And if you're not, you're just too dumb, you're too stupid to know the difference. And remember what these two first ladies said. As far as I'm concerned, any woman who voted against Hillary Clinton voted against their own voice in a way. They will be under tremendous pressure, and I'm talking principally about white women, tremendous pressure from fathers and husbands and boyfriends and, and male employers uh, not to vote for the girl. Oh, right, Hillary, we're all damsels in distress, and you're just, you know, Joan of Arc. 
Well, uh, long ago, these icons of the left and others sounded the dog whistle that it was okay to trash conservative women, and their media lackeys followed orders. It's disgraceful that a White House garden planted and maintained by the Park Service Service was celebrated for years in the media as a veritable Garden of Eden because it was dreamt up by Michelle Obama. But when a conservative first lady decorates the White House, spends time with D.C. school children, she is accused of exploiting them and was savage for her wardrobe. What happened to women being able to choose whatever they want to wear whenever they want to wear it? They're always pro-choice when it comes to aborting babies, but you now can't choose what you want to wear? It's a glaring double standard. It has to end. It's so obvious. Leave the first lady alone and just enjoy the decorations. It's Christmas time, which may well be the most beautiful series of decorations I have ever seen at the White House. And that's the angle. The left has been telling you for years what you can eat, what you should say, and now how you should feel. Take a listen to Michelle Obama. Yes, I do. Because we feel the difference now. Yeah. See, now we're feeling what not having hope feels like. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hope is necessary. It's, it's a necessary concept. What else do you have if you don't have hope? Really? This from a woman who in 2008, at 44 years old, said for the first time in her life she was proud of her country when her husband was running for president. And now, eight years later, you're out of hope, Michelle? You've lived a life few can even imagine at the citadel of power and prestige in the world. You and your husband, blessed by God and the American people, with a unique and historic opportunity to not only lead America from that shining place on a hill, but impact Americans and give them hope that virtually no others can. And now that you're leaving, hope is gone? Since when does hope rise and fall with you and Barack in the White House? But it doesn't end there. When asked if your husband's administration achieved his promise of hope to Americans, your answer, a resounding yes. Quote, especially in times of crisis and turmoil. Are you kidding? Did your husband give hope to the parents of James Foley or Stephen Sotloff, who was in custody for over a year while his family was told they could not negotiate because they'd be prosecuted before their son's heads were chopped off? To try to convince America that once you and Barack exit the White House, hope is removed for America is an outrage. And I'll tell you what else is an outrage. An outrage is when your husband struts up to the microphone at a national prayer breakfast and tells Christians to get off their high horses because the Christians are afraid of Muslim terrorists cutting their heads off. And I'd say that that was a crisis, but no hope there. ISIS today only looms larger. And by the way, Michelle, have you heard of San Bernardino, Orlando, or that workplace violence that happened at Fort Hood in Texas? In times of crisis and turmoil, like the 13 hours those heroes were on a rooftop in Benghazi, your all-powerful husband never bothered to explain to us where he was and what he was doing that night. All we know is the only power that he was ready to unleash was Air Force One to fly to Las Vegas for a fundraiser the next morning so that you guys could live the life another four years in the White House. But I get it. For you, hope is gone. You and your family and friends won't be able to fly to another 46 countries with security and hair and makeup in tow. Michelle, you may not realize it, but Americans rejected you and everything you stand for. 
They know what hope is. Hope is when people, 30,000 at a time, stand in line in the cold with their children, hoping to get the glimpse of a man that they think can change the course of their lives from the downward spiral that you and Mr. Hope and Change have put them on. I'll tell you what hope and change is. Hope and change is when people show up 20,000 strong after an election, desperate to see the man who actually brought back jobs, almost a thousand, when your husband said it was impossible to bring them back at Carrier. And by the way, if you want to know what it really feels like to not have hope, just walk out of the White House. As ordinary Americans, you'll see real fast. Welcome to the America you created, the one with a racial divide, a disrespect of law enforcement and the military, illegals cruising our borders, draining our schools and social services, ISIS and refugees on the rise. No hope? Michelle, I'm surprised at you. What happened to when they go low, we go high? And that's my opening statement. Tell me what you think on my Facebook page or Twitter. Hashtag Judge Janine. And joining me now.